What's up Titans? It's me your boy Scotty and you're watching yet another review of Love and Hip Hop and this is the season finale episode 10 of Love and Hip Hop. This has been 10 weeks of the best television since all mankind. I just want to send a special shout out to Mona Scott Young. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have shit to talk about every fucking Monday. You know what I'm saying? Basketball wives left and then you came into the picture. I just want to say keep doing what the fuck you doing and keep giving us this ratchet ass television. This is like the ratchet and the restless for all of us. It's, it's just like our own little soap opera or whatever and I just love it. So I just want to thank you for giving us this television. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. That's all I can really say for Mona Sky Young. I also want to send a special shout out to one of my subscribers. They asked for a shout out and I think they go by the name of Cam. They tweet me a lot. So I just want to send a special shout out to you. Now let me get into the video because, and before I get into this video, I want to ask y'all because I know I'm doing my Bad Girls Club video um, after this one as soon as I see the whole episode. But I also tried to watch R&B Divas. I didn't see the whole thing because I was flipping back and forth between Bad Girls Club. But I just want to know if y'all want me to um, review that show because y'all have asked me to review the Breakfast Family Values and I have yet to see that episode in full. So if y'all ask me to do that, R&B Divas. And uh, Braxton Family Values will be on the same video. And since Love and Hip Hop is over, Bad Girls Club and probably Basketball Wives LA will have their own video. So basically, and then Big Brother gonna have their own video because I do those bi weekly. You know what I'm saying? So. I think I have a good balance with that. But y'all, but just leave that in the comments if y'all want me to review R&B Divas or not. So let's get into the video. The episode opens up with Erica and Scrappy and at, they're at the new house or whatever. And Erica, I'm just glad that Erica got herself a new damn house. You know what I'm saying? And they sit up there talking about whatever's going on with Shay. And you know Erica described Buckeye completely right she is a slip bucket as far as rock say buckeye and her damn hair you know it ain't just bucky she got some she got a damn twin she got a siamese twin and that siamese twin is a half you know what i'm saying so shout out to forest rocks for saying that but you know she basically told scrappy that she can't trust him and you know she was in she was lo she loved him but she wasn't in love with him due to everything that he fucking did you know what i'm saying they finally broke up for the good i guess and you know scrappy is uh, you know i feel like scrappy is full of shit you know what i'm saying like he doesn't really know what he wants like he thinks I would think that Erica was down for him for all of these years and she took him back even after he did what he did with Diamond and, and, and that was that shit was public and she was publicly humiliated and she took his ass back all the time and I personally think that Erica deserves better than scrappy ass I mean it's clear that Erica got her head on straight and that you know She's way more mature than Scrappy is. And not to mention, Scrappy doesn't have any guidance. I mean, look at who the fuck his mama is. His mama is Mr. D, who was a former damn pimp. All the fuck she think about is how to do shit like a pimp and shit. And that's all she knows how to do. And that's the only mentality that he know how to have because of his damn mama. So, I can't really say that I fault him for being the way he is. I mean, look at who his mama is. You know what I'm saying? So, that's how I see that. And, um, I just think that Erica just needs to move on, which we know that she has and they're allegedly engaged now, but I just think that she deserves better. Um, next thing was with Carlos and Roscoe Dash looking like a damn cockroach. First of all, I just think that Carly is very fake. You know what I'm saying? She's very thirsty and she'll hop on any dick that'll get her in the motherfucking industry. And it's just real. And I just don't even think that she even needs to be back on Love and Hip Hop next season. She didn't really add much to the show. I mean, when you seen the previews, you would think that she was going to be the one to amp up the drama. And the only drama that she amped up was when she was being messy with the Mimi and Stevie situation. And then she was being messy with the Jocelyn shit. Then she was being messy with Kate Michelle. But don't nobody else on the show, none of the girls girls really fuck with her because I've never really seen her in a scene with people like Rashida. You know, I've seen her in scenes with K. Michelle and, you know, Arian didn't like her and I don't be more believe that Carly and Mimi were friends in Los Angeles like she say they was. I just think that that was just put on for the damn show. But she up here talking to Roscoe about doing a damn song and I've never really liked Roscoe, Roscoe Dash's music. I mean, I just really get him and Travis Porter all mixed up together anyway because they all make the same type of fucking music. And you know, 
Carla need to sit her ass down and go back to the nursing home because she know that damn boy is too young for her. Why is she all at the damn middle school picking out a damn, trying to pick out a dick? Why is she picking out a middle school dick when she know that her ass is a motherfucking in a damn nursing home? Carlos would need to have a damn seat and fix her damn grill, bitch. Y'all know she blocked me off Twitter, darling, with a bitch ass. That bitch, she just mad because I told her to stop being mess and get a damn grill fixed. I mean, I know I need to get mine fixed, too, but that bitch really need to get her fixed. All I need to do is get one tooth fixed. That bitch need a whole damn full, full work on her damn mouth. She do. So, she just need to sit down somewhere. She gonna get a rest of a statutory rape fucking with these little ass boys. Um, back to this whole damn session, therapy session with Mimi, Jocelyn, and Stevie. This whole thing is getting on my nerves. Stevie is very passive aggressive, number one, and he does think that he's God and he think he owns these motherfucking women. And they're both stupid. And I see that people were saying, I'd rather be on Jocelyn's side than be on Mimi's side. Bullshit. I wouldn't be on neither one of these bitches' sides to to be to be quite honest. I wouldn't be on them one of their sides because both of them are stupid as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, Mimi talking about, you know, and you accepted, Jocelyn. You accepted. Then Jocelyn put her hand up and said, but you accepted, too. You knew who this nigga was when you got with him 15 years ago. Mind y'all, she was never with the nigga for 15 years. She only known him for 15 years. She was dating him for four years, but that's besides the point. But she, but you know, Jocelyn was like, well, you know, you accept him, too, which Mimi does accept him. She obviously was. But this is what, and you know, she was like, obviously she cares. I really don't give a fuck what he do. He can sleep with whoever he wants to as long as I get my money, as long as he take care of me and my career, as long as I get my sex whenever I feel like it. That's all that really matters to me. I don't see how anybody can respect that shit. I don't respect that shit at all. I just feel like that shit is stupid. I don't see how anybody can respect that hood red ass mentality that Jocelyn got. I don't give a fuck if a motherfucker take care of me or not. I'm not gonna sit up here and say that I don't give a fuck about who they sleep with. That's how that's how Hood red ass um, mentality like that would get you a motherfucking STD. Jocelyn is stupid as hell. She do give a fuck about who he sleep with. Because every time she see another bitch in his face, she the first bitch to get mad. I don't see how anybody can be team Jocelyn or be team Mimi. I ain't team neither one of them bitches. How about that? Because both of them stupid. And everybody just, you know, praising Jocelyn for that hood red ass shit that she said. Well, I mean, Jocelyn don't give a fuck. All she care about is the dick and the money. She don't give a fuck who he have. You know, she thinking like a nigga. That's the problem. She thinking like a nigga. And, th and that only works for niggas. That don't, that don't work for females. She look like a damn dumbass. She sounded like a stupid ass hood rat. That's exactly what the fuck she sounded like, in my opinion. I just don't agree with that shit. Like, I never really understood that. I never understood why people do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, why the fuck will people? Why the fuck do people think that way? Like, that's not that's not cool to me. I don't agree with that shit. You know what I'm saying? I just don't. So it is what it is. Hold on. But. But yeah, um, I just don't, I just don't agree with that shit. I really don't. That's some hood rat ass shit. And as much as I love myself, some hood rats, I just don't agree with that mentality. It's stupid as fuck. And Stevie, he just really think that he own folks. Like he just think that he just, in a way, he does own these bitches because they gonna do whatever the fuck he asking them. But he just very condescending and very stupid. And I just can't ride with that motherfucker. That has Franklin turtle looking ass motherfucker. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, so um, Mimi told Arian that she that um she don't want to have nothing else to do with Stevie and that she done with Stevie and Arian all happy happy and Jolly Rancher lucky because she said that she happy. Newsflash, y'all. Arian is a motherfucking lesbian. I don't give a fuck when nobody say she only happy because she ready to eat that box out. That's what that is. She been waiting to get to the box and since she done kicked Stevie ass to the curb or said that she kicked Stevie ass to the curb because she ain't kicked shit to the curb because she was just on TMZ with the bitch two weeks ago. So she obviously ain't kicked him to the curb but um you know what I'm saying but yeah um hold on y'all but yeah, um, Erin has been been waiting for this moment just so she can get close to the box. She ready to taste that twat and see how good it is. Just ready to get the juices and everything. She ready to, she, that shit is easy like Sunday morning to her ass. She ready for that. She ready for that box. She was taking, every, she was just soaking everything Mimi was saying. She been waiting for that shit. Like, you could tell she was just giddy about it. She was like... Uh, I am so glad that she's finally done this. No, in other words, I'm so glad 
and she's dumb Stevie. Now I can finally get that box like I want to. I can eat it. I can bump it. I can flip it and rub it down. I can do whatever I want to to that box. That's what I want to do. And you can't blame Erin for wanting the box. I mean, hey, Mimi is pretty and she look like she could she'll get down with a woman every once or twice. So, you know what? You know what? I'm proof for Mimi and Erin to be together. Hey, I fuck Stevie. Because he obviously, you know, he obviously like to be in the man. She, he like to dip in the man pool too. I mean, look at the bitch he was fucking while he was with you. Anyway, so Bucky and Stevie, uh, not Stevie, Bucky and the Scrappy had the conversation and she bang, mainly got into tears because she felt like she was being used. And Lil Scrappy basically told her that he was still in love with Erica and you know, Bucky was like, you can't put that shit, what you doing right here? You playing with me just like that bitch right there was playing with you. First of all, you dumbass, you already knew what the situation was. You shouldn't have put your heart into it in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Why you was sitting up here bad mouthing the girl or whatever. Like, I just, I'm just not here for Bucky. Guy. Like, I, I'm not trying to get a bitch a chance. Like, and then she just would do anything to get on VH1. I don't see why she keep getting on VH1. Because every time her dumb ass get on VH1, her ass get played by a nigga. She got played by Flavor Flay by all people. Now her dumb ass get played by Scrappy. Ain't that the damn mess? And why would she do something with her hair? I mean, she could have borrowed one of K. Michelle wigs or something. Like, bitch, do something about your fucking hair. Because you look a damn mess. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, um, Stevie J and Jocelyn had a conversation and Jocelyn was like if she, uh, she wants to find a man that's going to love her and all that stuff Jocelyn needs to sit her ass down she ain't never going to leave Stevie J alone so she might as well just get over it but I will say that no matter what I say about Jocelyn she does look cute with long hair with the long black hair like I'm I'm over that to pay her ass be wearing like I'm over that shit and I'm struggling ass braids she wear I'm here for the long hair and she needs to keep that but I don't think she needs to be nobody rapper she just needs to lay that shit down you know that's how I feel K. Michelle and Erica, they was looking for furniture and they was talking about Erica new house and then they got to talking about the shit with Rashida and you know, Erica seems to be the most level-headed girl on the show. She was the one who told K. Michelle that she needs to talk to Rashida and be an adult about it, which she does need to be an adult about it. Like, even though you know, Rashida made her mad, just try to sit down and talk to her about how you felt about it and you know, that's how I feel. So, I love that K. Michelle and Erica scene and I honestly think that, you know, Erica and K. Michelle are really good friends and I really believe that, you know, I just think that K. Michelle and Erica, uh, you know, I just think that they are good as friends. I, I, I believe, and just like I thought that K. Michelle and Rashida are friends, that's why I'm so upset because I really like K. Michelle and Rashida as friends. But, you know, it is what it is. Bitches gotta, bitches gotta choose sides, so it is what it is. Um, I ain't really got nothing else to say about Jocelyn. Um, she just fucking annoying. Get into the scene with K. Michelle dragging Rashida once again. You know what I'm saying? I kind of got what K. Michelle was saying. I mean, she said it hurts to come from her because she knows some of what she's seen of Rash of K of her. And she was like, yeah, I know some of what I've seen from you, but I know a lot about them. Like, we've been to each other crib or whatever. Bitch, stop being so stupid and stop being so damn blind, Rashida. Just because of, just because you know somebody don't mean that they're not capable of shit. I don't put nothing past no motherfucking body. And everybody can say, oh, Memphis didn't have no record of being a bitch ass before. Neither did Chris Brown. But he beat the fuck out of Rihanna. So all that dumb shit is not really necessary. I don't think that nobody thought that uh, that Chris Brown was fucking capable of beating a bitch ass the way he beat Rihanna ass. And did you see her face? He beat the shit out of her. I didn't think that he had it in his ass to beat a bitch ass like that because I thought he was a punk ass faggot. But I see that he got little hands on his ass. So that, you know that's just what I that's just how I see it. You just can't say just because that's your damn wife. For, um, that's just because that's your best friend husband that you don't believe it. Like you don't tell just like Kay Michelle said, she was being insensitive and everybody can say Rashida has a right to her opinion. She does have a right to her opinion. If she feel like K. Michelle didn't beat his ass, that's her opinion. But at the same time, that's not something you say to somebody when and cause that's fucking insensitive. You don't sit up there and tell nobody when they're trying to tell you that they got their ass beat that, oh, I don't believe it happened. That's some bullshit. That's just like telling somebody who got molested as a kid, oh, that didn't happen to you. When they know that somebody was playing up in their ass. You can't sit up there and tell nobody what the fuck happened to them when your ass went there and you didn't even know said person when the shit happened. You know what I'm saying? 
And I just feel like Rashida is just fucking up because she's stepping into a place where she don't need to be in. If she had a problem with the shit, if she knew that, you know, she didn't want to be involved with the shit with K. Michelle and Toy, then she should have said something from the very beginning. She should have made it clear that I want to build a relationship with you, K. Michelle. I don't want to um, judge you based on what I heard about you and based on what my friends said. So I'd rather just keep it like that because in situations like that when you friends with both sides you want really need to just keep your mouth shut and not say nothing just stay the fuck out of it and that's what Rashida failed to do and another thing I'm not even gonna do with my perspective on the shit that happened with K. Michelle this weekend I'm gonna say what the fuck I'm, I'm gonna say about it right now I feel like K. Michelle, Rashida and Toya all need to sit their ass down first of all K. Michelle you don't owe nobody no motherfucking explanation you don't have to prove shit to me you ain't gotta prove shit to Rashida Toya and you ain't gotta prove shit to nobody else you know what the fuck happen you got the motherfucking proof you see motherfuckers ain't believing you if you feel that strongly about if you want everybody to believe you and you are and you feel that strongly about what happened to you set the motherfucking text messages out and put that motherfucker on blast get everybody who was involved Cause I don't think nobody can make up no story involving a damn record label because if that was the case, the record label would have stepped in and they would have had, they would have just stopped her ass right then and there if she was really lying. And if you don't want her to talk about it, put a gag on on the bitch mouth and just shut the fuck up. I just think that K. Michelle just don't need, she just need to stop explaining herself, stop responding to motherfuckers and just focus on her music, focus on saving our daughters and just be a more positive example because as much as I love K. Michelle, her attitude and the way that she's been twisted her, venting is not a good look for her in her career and I just want her to stop doing it. Fuck these bitches. Focus on you and your career. Focus on getting you a label, um, a, a record deal with a new label and just focus on you and your music and what the fuck you want to accomplish. Fuck this shit. Don't let Memphis and what the fuck he did to you define you and your whole damn career. That's not what I want for you, K. Michelle. I like you for you, for your music and who you are. I don't give a fuck about what happened in the past. All I want you to do is give me that album like you've been giving me the mixtapes and just do what it do. Fuck Toya, fuck Rashida, and fuck Memphis. They need to be the last thing on your mind. Toya, you need to sit her damn half talking ass down and just worry about what the fuck she got going on. She need to worry about her own damn marriage. Like, you can stand by your man all you want to, but if this bitch is this irrelevant to you, then stop speaking on her and stop saying shit on Twitter and deleting it like a punk pussy bitch. Stop doing it. Rashida, you riding for Memphis, riding for Toya motherfucking husband more than you ride for your own damn husband. If you took the same energy for the same energy that you take when you ride for Memphis the way that you ride for Memphis and took that same fucking energy and applied it to when Deb was going in on your husband two episodes ago, I respect you. But I don't respect the bitch who let a damn Frankenstein looking ass as bitch like Deb go in on a damn husband like that. But see, you riding for Memphis like that's your man. Sit your grandmama ass down and just shut the fuck up. Like, I always felt like you was one of the most mature women on the show, but you being just as petty as K. Michelle and Toya. Just stay the fuck out of it and just leave it alone. That's all I gotta say about it. I'm, I'm tired of talking about it. Um, as far as Carly, her ass is stupid because she swear to God that she loved Benzino. How the fuck you love somebody and you only been with this motherfucker for four episodes? Like I said, that shit is fucking fake and scripted. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. This shit is fucking scripted. The Carl and Benzino shit is the most fake, unrealistic relationship I have ever heard in my life. Like, it's, it's just crazy. Mimi finally tells Stevie J that she done. She's like, I'm done. I no longer want to be in a relationship with you no more. Girl, stop lying. You know you finna take this motherfucker back. Stop lying. You were just on TMZ with the motherfucker. Just like I said, Mimi and Jazz are stupid as hell and I don't see how anybody can fucking you know, defend either one of them because both of them stupid. And then even Stevie called this bitch dumb. You know what I'm saying? Fuck Stevie. You don't need him for shit. You got your own cleaning company. You said you've had it for 11 years. Focus on that. Fuck that, that turtle looking motherfucker. Why the fuck is you worried about this bitch? Fuck him. And let him slurn the man pun if he wants to. Rashida um... The episode basically ended with Kirk and Rashida renewing their vows. Rashida looked very cute and you know what I'm saying? It was just a nice little setting. I think it was a nice way to end it. And with that being said, 
before I end my review, I just got to say whatever I got to say about everybody towards the end. Carly is a fucking opportunist. I love K. Michelle. Fuck what a bitch got to say. I think Erica is the most mature woman on the show and the most beautiful one. I think that Jocelyn looks good with long hair, but she dumb as fuck. I think Stevie J and Scrappy are full of shit. I don't think that Benzino needs to come he needs to come back. He's very useless. I think that Mimi has much more potential than she's giving off, but I just think that she's stupid as fuck, and I think she's going to always be under Stevie J's thumb and his motherfucking spell and so is Jocelyn. That's how I feel about it. And that's all I gotta say about Love and Hip Hop the finale. Make sure y'all leave y'all comments below. Make sure y'all like and comment and rate and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing what y'all got to say. The next video y'all see is the Bad Girls Club Mexico. And um, y'all need to let me know if y'all want me to review R&B Divas. And if y'all do, I'm gonna put R&B Divas and Breast and Family Values all in one video. Be on the lookout for an Scotty video. And if anything juicy going on in the entertainment business, look out for my perspective. I'm out of here, you guys. Till next video, peace.